Hi, my name is Nathan Stein, and I'm with Pix4D. Today I'm going to show you how to use a DGI multispectral unit uh, known as the Phantom 4 multispectral. And we get a lot of questions about this at Pix4D, so we thought we'd do just a quick demo and uh, how to use it and calibrate it. So I've got all my equipment out here today. I'm out by my field, and I'm ready to fly. I have my tablet, my drone ready with my propellers ready. I've got a calibration target and my remote. Everything's fully charged and ready to go. Um, I'm going to set up my mission. So that's one of the most important things that we do. And here what we do is we're going to go ahead and open the DJI uh, Ground Station Pro app. And then what we need to do is click the plus button and click photo map. We're going to click tap and we're going to draw this on the field. So we're going to draw on the field our mission and we're going to put our our map here in place roughly where we want it to go. We can see it on the aerial map. You may want to make this a little bit larger and we'll review this before we do our flight so that's important to keep note of. We want to make sure that we're flying at least over the edges of the field. So to start we have our basic and advanced settings. What we want to do is go in and make sure that we're selecting the Phantom 4 multispectral camera. We want to make sure that the shooting angle is course aligned. We also want to make sure that the capture mode, there's two different things here. We've got hover and capture at point and capture at equal distance interval. Now, most of the time we would suggest using hover and capture at point. This means it flies, it t stops, takes a picture, flies and takes and stops and takes a picture again. Now for a lot of people that's a little bit slow and if they have to I think I would encourage using capture at equal distance interval and set the time frame uh, at or the shutter interval at three seconds. But for this we're going to use hover and capture at point. We're going to use the inside mode for our flight course mode and it automatically sets the speed and everything for us. Uh, we don't have to really mess with that. My height is at 395 feet because I'm just going to take, um, it doesn't really matter if I have really high resolution photos for this flight. If I wanted to fly um, higher resolution, I'd drop it down and I wouldn't go any lower than probably 115 feet or 35 meters. So just drop that flight down and then uh, at least that gives us the best data that we can possibly get. So, moving on to the advanced tab. You can control your overlap ratio, and a lot of people have questions about this. Front lap is the picture to picture as it's going in its flight. We want that set at about 80%. The side overlap, which is the each path and the way the pictures align from side to side, we want to have at 70%. Now, the course angle can be set at whatever you want. Some people would like to fly efficiently with the longest pass possible, but we're gonna go ahead and recommend to use what DJI's auto, state, auto settings are when you hit the fly button. At the very end, it'll suggest the direction of flight, and that's when the perfect time is to, to change that angle if you want. Um, everything else seems to be set up just fine. You might wanna name your mission. So you click up here in the top and, and then name it as you wish. I'm going to call this a demo. And now I've got my flight. I can save in the top left where the floppy disk is. That saves the mission. And then I can also save the default settings of like the side up overlap and the, and the resolution and, and uh, the height of the flight by clicking the, the floppy disk with the gear by it. And that sets it as default. So now that we've got our, our tablet set up and we've got our drone powered up and our controller powered up, I've already connected to my drone and I've set up my uh, RTK. So I've got my I'm using a cores network that's local to my area. And the drone is ready. So we need to capture our calibration target. And what I'm doing here is I'm just going to use the box that came with it and I'm going to set it down. It's black so it's not going to reflect a lot of light. And I want to make sure that I keep it away from anything that's really, really bright. So maybe this controller should move over. And we shouldn't leave our iPad out in the sunlight either because uh, it's easily overheated in the sun. So I'm going to move it over here. And then uh, I do have my, my aircraft ready here. 
to go ahead and capture this calibration target. And what you want to do is you notice that the camera itself here is looking straight out and we want it to look down. So we're going to use our controller and this left joystick is going to rotate this thing down negative 90 degrees. Okay, so we're ready for that. Now this is on a flat surface. I normally orient it north for just convention. And then it's in full sunlight. We want to make sure we don't cover up the sunlight sensor on top of here. And we want to be in full sunlight, not in the shadows, not next to like a red truck or wearing a bright red shirt or something that's going to reflect on this. So we're going to pick up our drone and then we're going to carry it over the top of the target like this. And we're not going to want to cast a shadow down. So what we want to do is kind of orient this so that we don't get a shadow if we can help it. And we don't want to cast it on the target. So it kind of takes a little bit of time and practice to get where you want to be. I kind of like it here. Maybe if you go a little bit higher, you can get right above that target. So we're going to move our controller so I can click my button. Sometimes this helps if you have a second person, but in this case, I don't. So I'm going to do it myself. We want to select the lower right hand corner. We're going to make sure that we can see the pictures that's coming down here. And then we're going to make sure we set it. I flip from manual to auto quick uh, just to make sure that the auto is working. And then you can just capture these photos by holding it above like this. Um, again, careful not to shadow. And then we can take a picture. One picture, two pictures, and then maybe a little higher. Okay, that should be plenty of photos for a calibration photo. Okay, now that we've got the, the uh, drone out here and it's loaded and ready, I've got it uh, booted up, I've got its location, and I'm ready to fly. I'm going to go ahead and check my course angle one more time. I'm going to go ahead and transmit data. Sometimes it'll tell you to readjust the course angle and you click OK. And then you just step back start your flight. Home location is Okay, so that wraps it up for our flight. Now we'll go ahead and process the data. So now that we're done with our flight, all we need to do is remove our SD card from the side of the drone and place it down. We'll go ahead and use an adapter to get it to an SD, regular SD card size and put that into my computer. Once we've booted up PIX40 fields, which I already have loaded, I just go ahead and start a new project and import images. And then I'm going to import the regular images, just the ones that we took. Specifically, let's take the, uh, we go to the DCM folder and we look for the media folder. That's where we took the single shots. We're going to select those images and Once we've done that, we import them. And we're going to use rig relative calibration, which is on, radiometric correction, because we have the panel now. And we need to just go ahead and click off limit ortho mosaic size if we want to use full resolution processing. Click apply. And then import the rest of the images. I normally select import folder, which makes it a lot faster. 
we go to back to the DCIM and then open the plan folder. Once we've selected all those images, it'll go ahead and bring in all the images that you've that you flew, and then you can go ahead and start processing. and click start processing. Now we're just going to let it sit here for a few minutes and after a short break we'll be back and be able to review the results. So this concludes how we can go ahead and set up a flight plan and capture a calibration panel image and then fly a DJI a Phantom 4 multispectral camera or drone to capture a data set of a field and then process it here in PIX4D fields. If you have any questions I encourage you to go ahead to our support page and check that out. We have lots of articles on there. Uh, one that talks about how to do this process we also encourage you to go to our, our web page and download a free trial, a 15-day free trial of PIX4D fields that you can then use for your fields and your mapping missions. Thank you. Thank you.